Coming up this morning on DITV Student Rally, UI grad students make their voices heard on the Pentacrest. And later on, we take a look at how local businesses are getting in the holiday spirit. We have your highlights from the Iowa women's basketball game against Florida State last night. And we have the Hawkeye football players who were named the Big Ten All-Conference Offensive Team. Temperatures have been steadily rising since the middle of the Thanksgiving break. Take a look at what will happen to weather throughout the end of the semester. All that and more coming your way. Stay right there. DITV starts now. Good morning and thanks for tuning in. I'm Christopher Cervantes. And I'm Sunny Zatz. In response to the recent tax plan proposal, University of Iowa graduate students rallied on the Pentacrest yesterday afternoon. A crowd of 80 people gathered to explain how they find the potential tax bill financially dangerous to more than 140,000 graduate students across the country. As of now, graduate students can receive tuition waivers if they teach or do research. If the new Senate tax bill is passed, graduate tuition can be taxed regardless of their work. UI President Bruce Harold attended the rally to listen to students' concerns, and you can read all about it on the front page of today's edition of the Daily Iowa, where reporter Tian Liu goes more in depth. The Iowa City School Board is now ready to accelerate five projects related to the $190 million bond voters approved in September. The bond money is expected to launch the remodeling of Southeast Junior High, North Central Junior High, Tate High, Alexander Elementary, and City High. The design process will begin in the next few months, which means construction can start as soon as mid-2018. Downtown Iowa City businesses are participating in an annual month-long scavenger hunt. DITV reporter Lauren Verrell has more. From November 25th till January 1st, the Iowa City Downtown District is hosting an elf hunt for kids of all ages. There are 40 elves hidden in 40 different downtown locations. Once a participant locates a hidden elf, the store will give out a found card that can be returned to three different downtown locations to redeem a prize. Angie Pelkington explains why the Iowa City Public Library got picked as a prize pickup location. It got picked because we're open seven days a week. Um, so that's why we're one of the locations to pick up prizes. Not all businesses are open all those days. So we're kind of a central located area. So that's one of the reasons why we are and it's kid friendly in the children's room. Once the participant returns 15 found cards, they are entered to win a grand prize. All businesses participating volunteered to host an elf in their store. So we put a formula online and any of the businesses that wanted to participate could um, sign up and buy an elf and then we helped to make the cards that we hand out at each store for each kid to come and grab and after that they can take them to the stores to get a little prize but then be entered in to win a bigger prize for a grand prize basket. This event has been going on in Iowa City for the past few years and is hoped to continue for years to come. The Elf Hunt is a free, all-day holiday event that has already had over 100 participants. If you happen to come across any of these cute little elves during your holiday shopping, make sure to pick up a card from the store and bring it to Film Sleen, Englert Theater, or the Children's Room in the Iowa City Public Library. Reporting from the downtown Iowa City Teddy Bear Room, I'm Lauren Varell, Daily Iowan TV. As the semester comes to an end, the University of Iowa is focusing on food insecurity with a new program to help students. The Hawkeye Meal Share program is taking full effect and allows students to donate their unused meal swipes to those who need it more. Food insecurity is defined as the lack of ability to obtain nutritious and adequate food. Data from the Food Bank of Iowa shows that one in eight Iowans struggle with the issue of food insecurity, totaling to around 400,000 struggling residents. The team to make this program happen included UI Student Government, the Food Pantry, and the Dean of Students Office. For more on the Hawkeye Meal Share program, you can go online to www.dining.uiowa.edu. You know, Sydney, I've actually done some research into food insecurity, and it gets especially hard during these upcoming winter months. That's right, Chris, but fortunately we have seen warmer weather the past few days, so I know that does help those uh, who are in those situations. But you never know what to expect in Iowa weather, so let's test over jing -Yuk Kim in the weather studio to see what kind of weather we can be expecting. jing -Yuk? 
Thanks, guys. We are experiencing another autumn inside official winter. However, coldness is coming back from next week. We are seeing a bunch of 50s and 30s throughout, the, throughout this week. Today will be sunny and clear day. The highest temperature will reach 51 and it will drop down to 34 degrees at night. Tomorrow morning will be a little bit chillier as it will fall more to 27 degrees. Looking at our extended forecast, Highest temperature on Friday will reach 51 degrees with some clouds. On Saturday, we are looking at partly cloudy skies with temperatures being high of 55 and low of 33 degrees. Sunday will be cloudy, but it will be the warmest day of the week. The gap between the highest and the lowest temperatures is only 5 degrees. We are looking at rainy skies on Monday with temperatures reaching high of 56 and low of 32 degrees. Grab an umbrella to avoid getting hit by rain. Real winter weather is coming back from next Tuesday. Temperatures will rapidly drop down to high of 42 and low of 22 degrees. We are expecting that temperatures will steadily, sometimes drastically, drop down to even below 20 degrees after Tuesday. So you should prepare for this coming freezing coolness in Iowa City. That's your weather for the week. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Jin Yuk. Now, the University of Iowa College of Public Health is putting a survey out there to learn more about the health status of the LGBT community on campus. The survey tries to understand the living conditions of the LGBT, excuse me, LGBTQ people and know if they face cases of discrimination. The College of Public Health believes that there are high rates of risky behavior among the LGBTQ community such as smoking and substance abuse. The purpose of the survey is to help tackle these issues and learn how they can be solved. If you're looking for a new pizza place to try, then you're in luck. Rusiano's recently opened up in North Liberty, and I made my way over there to get a slice of the action. A few weeks ago, Gennaro Rusiano opened up Rusiano's in North Liberty, a restaurant giving customers an authentic taste of Napoli, Italy. While Rusiano is new to Iowa, this isn't his first go around as a chef. When Rusiano's friend Carol came to visit him in Italy, she had the idea to bring Rusiano's skills to America. I was uh, at that time working around Europe uh, doing this kind of job, like pizza chef around Europe. And then I came back from a, uh, a season and we just start talking about having, trying to have business together. And she say, you know, let me come back to the United States, let me see if I can make that happen. Rusiano aims to bring the heart of Napoli right to your table. His special secret is his pizza dough, which can take up to 24 hours to rise. It's made fresh in-house daily and not only does he use Italian imports, but he incorporates some ingredients from local vendors. And I think it's, it's you know, sometimes people just think that it's, uh, it needs to be something impacted too much, but it's just simplicity. Ruciano's is open daily, Tuesday from Sunday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Ruciano does plan to open the restaurant up for lunch hours once he can find some more employees, so they are hiring if you're interested. Ooh. You know, Chris, I have been to Italy uh, once, and that pizza, it was like, I was right back in Italy. It was amazing. Well, I got to tell you, so right now, I am very hungry, but you know what I'm really hungry for? A win in Hawkeye Sports. Let's toss it over to Lucy Rodine in the sports studio to see what's going down. Thanks, guys. Women's basketball had a major test last night as they took on a top 25 team in Florida State. The Iowa women's basketball team took on the 13th ranked Florida State Seminoles at Carver Hawkeye Arena in a very close game with back to back scoring. While the Hawks took their first loss of the season 94 to 93, the Seminoles still remained undefeated. Florida State created a 12 point fourth quarter deficit, which helped them out at the end to come out with a win. At one point in the game, the Hawkeyes made 15 consecutive shots and were shooting 61% from the field. Megan Gustafson led the Hawkeyes with 34 points and 9 rebounds and went 15 for 18 in field goals. Along with that, sophomore Kathleen Doyle and junior Mackenzie Meyer both provided the Hawks with 6 assists each. Great job offensively. Um, defensively, we just didn't have an, an answer for Thomas. Um, Imani, I know she shot well from three-point range, but I thought Thomas and the block uh, really, really hurt us. We have went against two exceptional offensive rebounding teams. Florida State ranks in the top in the country in offensive rebounding. They get over 50% of their offensive rebounds, which is amazing. We held them to 39 tonight. 
so it was actually better than anybody else has been able to hold them. Having that confidence right away instead of having a slow start was what got us going. We took the number 11 team. We led the number 11 team for 30, almost 31 minutes. Uh, so I, I hope they gain confidence that they can play with anybody in the country. Now, although they did not come away with the win, they were still able to keep up with the 13th best team in the country and only lost by a single point. Five Hawkeyes scored in double digits. Delaney Parker has more on the positive outlooks of their first loss of the season. Last night, the Iowa women's basketball team took on number 13th ranked Florida State. Despite the one loss deficit 94-93, the Hawks displayed mental and physical toughness. Last night, the Hawks showed that they are able to compete with top-ranked competitors. Together as a team, the Hawks played with confidence and fought hard on every possession. I'm really proud of my team. I thought they battled every second out there. Um, proud of their effort. Um, I, I wish we could have given them the win. I think they deserved it. I think the fans saw a very exciting, fun game tonight. Putting up 34 points, 100% from the free throw line, and nine rebounds, Gustafson not only carried her team on the boards, but also with words of encouragement. Just having that confidence, keep it going, like don't let it waver. I think you know my teammates, you know they they need to have that confidence, you know, going into it. We did lose, but it was only by one point to the number 11 or 13th ranked team in the country, and so uh, we can beat anyone, uh, anyone in the country. I think right now. Staying motivated against the Seminoles was a major component to the Hawks' game plan for last night's game, as well come conference play. Gustafson's role for the Hawks has helped bring the team together, especially playing alongside both mental and physical teams. It's a roller coaster. I mean, I think just you know having those high and lows and being able to withstand those lows and withstanding their runs is really important. I think we did a great job as a team just kind of coming together in huddles and getting ourselves motivated to keep going. And I know it was a heartbreaker, but we're going to come back stronger than ever. With the record of 7-1, the Hawks will be back in action right here this Sunday against Stanford at 2 p.m. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this is Lainey Parker with DI TV Sports. The team will have a couple days off, but will be back inside of Carver Hawkeye Arena on Sunday against Stanford at 2 p.m. on BTN Plus, and hopefully they'll start a new win streak. More Hawkeyes were named to awards yesterday. University of Iowa senior guard Sean Welsh has been named the first team All Big Ten by me league media and second team All Big Ten by the coaches. The offensive honorees were determined by a vote of league coaches and media. Individual awards will be announced today. In addition to Welsh, senior running back Akram Wadley and sophomore tight end Noah Fant were named third team All Big Ten by coaches and media. Junior center da James Daniels and sophomore quarterback Nate Stanley earned honorable mention recognition. On the defensive side, University of Iowa senior linebacker Josie Jewell is one of four finalists for the 2017 Lot Impact Trophy. The announcement was made Wednesday by the Pacific Club Impact Foundation, which is responsible for honoring the nation's best defensive impact player at the end of the season. The Lot Impact Trophy winner will be announced Sunday, December 10th at the Pacific Club in Newport Beach, California by Ronnie Lott. Each finalist will receive $5,000 for the university's general scholarship fund, with the winner earning $25,000 for the fund. Former Iowa linebacker James Morris was a finalist for the award in 2013, while former defensive back Desmond King was a semifinalist in 2016. Now, unfortunately, the Hawkeye football team will not be traveling to the Big Ten Championship this weekend, but we will get to hear what bowl game I will be traveling to when it's announced this Sunday. A lot of fans are hoping for the Holiday Bowl in California, but I hope the Hawks get invited to the Music City Bowl because who wouldn't want to be in Nashville over New Year's Eve? And since I'm from North Carolina, I'm definitely hoping it's that game since it's in Tennessee and I'll be able to make the trip. But we'll have all the Big Ten Bowl updates for you guys on Monday's show. Come back tomorrow morning to watch Mary-Kate Herrian and Zach Mackey break down Iowa's first Big Ten matchup with Penn State on Saturday. Guys, back to you. All right, everyone, that brings this Thursday morning broadcast to an end. I'm Christopher Cervantes. And I'm Sydney Zatz. Have a good day, Iowa City, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.